What is going on, IF Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna to talk about OMAD, one meal a day. Is there a detriment to doing one meal a day every single day? Should one meal a day be broken up into different fasting protocols, or should you have breaks in between throughout the week? I'm gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, so jumping right into the video, let's go ahead and talk about OMAD, one meal a day. Now, I know a lot of you guys, a lot of my viewers use one meal a day and enjoy it and want to do it every single day, but fear that there are videos or information out there stating that one meal a day might not be so good for you in terms of nutrition and in terms of glucose levels increasing. Well, let me go ahead and talk about this. First of all, definitely whatever you do should be based on what type of strategy you're trying to implement. In my personal opinion, I do not believe that one meal a day is the best if you're trying to build muscle, if you want to be at a caloric maintenance level. If you want to lose weight, I do believe that one meal a day is pretty ideal as it helps you restrict calorie intake for one and also keeps you in that fastest state longer. So when you do that metabolic switchover after the eight to 12 hour time period, you have a longer period of being in that fat burning state where your body is utilizing your free fatty acids to oxidize fat using the beta hydroxybutyrate coming from the liver and then switching itself from glucose utilization to ketone utilization. And that's how you partition the calories that you burn to focus on the body fat specifically. And that's a benefit that comes from the longer you fast, the better. But what about nutrition? What about calories? calorie intake. So if you want to increase calorie intake and be at a caloric surplus and probably use that to build muscle, then OMAD is probably not the best because of so many different factors. It's harder to eat all of that food in one sitting. Also, one of the elements of protein synthesis is meal frequency. So probably the 16-8 model is better for meal frequency as opposed to one meal a day since you're taking off one of the elements of protein synthesis. But that is not the only element so you can still build muscle with one meal a day just know that you're not giving yourself all of the tools because increased protein intake calorie surplus resistance training all lend to the increase in protein synthesis so if you want more tools in your tool belt in terms of protein synthesis the 168 model would work best for building muscle as opposed to one meal a day. But what about insulin sensitivity? One big thing that gets touched on when it comes to one meal a day is the possible increase in blood glucose levels because you're eating all of your meals in one sitting. Now, this is based off of a study that was done in 2007, published in the National Institute of Health by Mark Matson and colleagues. And what they saw was during a 60 minute period, during a 90 minute period, and during a 120 minute period, the fasting blood glucose was increased significantly for those who were doing one meal a day versus those who were doing three meals a day. And many have taken that snapshot to say, well, it appears that one meal a day is bad for insulin sensitivity because your glucose is shot up when you're eating. But you have to look at the full study to completely understand the bigger picture, the, the zoomed out version of what you're seeing. To start, they started off at a very similar blood glucose level at the 60 minute mark. It then starts to increase and they do a separation until they get to about 120 minutes and then you start to see it actually get closer again. So they just tested the blood glucose levels within 120 minutes versus the entire 24 hours frame. We don't know if the glucose levels even reduce further down away from the three meal a day group if we were to continue to see what happens after the 120 minutes. But using the regression formula and looking at the curve, you can see that there is a reduction and a closing in. Meanwhile, the three meal a day group stays at a steady rate. So it appears that it could eventually even go below the three meal a day group. But we don't know that with that particular study because of the fact that we don't see further than the 120 minutes. But here's something that you should know. The one meal a day group ate their meal very, 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 very late, very close to the proximity of when they tested their blood glucose levels. The three meal a day group finished their meal very, very, very early. And this was a limitation that the researchers even talked about themselves in that particular study and said that this could have 
completely skewed the numbers because of course if you haven't eaten yet there is no insulin response and then once you eat there's going to be a major insulin response does that mean that insulin sensitivity is reduced over a 24 hour frame i do not believe that this study in and of itself can actually declare that the study even compared itself from another study from the national institute of health done by mark mattson and colleagues as well that looked at alternate day fasting in which insulin sensitivity was increased now with alternate day fasting you're fasting for a longer time period you're fasting for longer than 24 hours you're fasting for up to 36 hours but they still saw an increase in insulin sensitivity in that group there was also a timing difference with the way they were eating and meal timing is important as well the earlier you eat more within the circadian rhythm the better this group in that 2007 study that i mentioned ate very very late and they all of their calories during that time were not allowed to eat at a caloric deficit had to eat at caloric maintenance to match the three meal a day group and in a 2018 study looking at the effects of meal timing on postprandial glucose by masaki takashi and colleagues they looked at three meals a day where you eat earlier during the day and three Three meals a day where you eat later and the three meals a day group that ate later although the calories were the same everything was the same and it was staying at a caloric maintenance level they had higher levels of blood glucose when they tested for it so what does this tell you if you take a group that eats earlier it's always going to be better than later in terms of acute blood glucose increase but this still is not an indicator of total 24 hour blood glucose increase so none of those studies although they can show you why you will see a high higher level in an acute time frame to give you an idea of what can happen for when you're eating it still doesn't tell you a 24 hour picture one study looking at the 24 hour picture which is a 2009 study that came out in the american journal of physiology and the chronology and metabolism by salgan and colleagues looked at the 24 hour picture and saw insulin sensitivity increase with the 24 hour fast group so it's a group that fasted for 24 hours they also had other groups that fasted for 24 hours and gave them anti-lipolysis pill which is considered the placebo pill but what it was was it actually tried to prevent lipolysis so that they could see if the mechanism in and of itself of fasting could create insulin sensitivity or blood glucose changes and what they saw within the 24 hour frame was that yeah they fasted for 24 hours and then ate their meal but within that 24 hour picture they still had increases of free fatty acid oxygen sedation which is an indicator of insulin sensitivity and insulin sensitivity in and of itself was increased in line with the growth hormone increased so although the body was very reactive to the fact that they hadn't eaten for so long it counteracted using the growth hormone increase with insulin to make it more efficient so insulin sensitivity was still very effective even though they took them 24 hours to eat each of their meals so studies can give us data and are very important but you still have to look at the bigger picture a bigger snapshot if a study only looks at 120 minutes and you look at variables that can cause certain outcomes within that 120 minutes it starts to deteriorate the declaration of something like insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity reduction when there isn't more information or data within that study to back that for a 24-hour frame or for one week or for one month etc etc so if you want to do one meal a day for maintenance for example if you want to do one meal a day to lose weight you can do one meal a day and there are many things that you can eat that would be satiating or allow you to consume the allotted amount of calories that you need for the day that are still healthy it isn't impossible to do so and many people utilize OMAD and eat healthy at the same time but at the end of the day it all comes down to what you want to do this video is simply to let you know that there isn't any inherent elements that should stop you in terms of health in terms of insulin sensitivity in terms of blood glucose if you don't want to stop doing OMAD but if you want to stop doing OMAD because it's uncomfortable for you, because you prefer a different protocol, because you prefer to throw it in every once in a while, but not completely stick to it because of rhythm purposes, because of preference, that is definitely up to you because adherence at the end of the day is the most important thing. So I'm going to link all of the studies that I talked about down below. And hopefully this video is helpful for you if you were on the fence or confused lately about one meal a day. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here.
And as always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!